What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Digging Life Road Show this morning. Um, today's projects uh, pretty simple. Or we just got to go get the excavator picked up off of the last job where we put that culvert in. So we'll get to look that over. We got a really good day of rain since we've been up there. So we'll get to see if it's, you know, been able to run off and uh, the ground tighten up or if it's still soft. We'll probably have to just do a quick touch up on it. Uh, if that's the case, we may get a little footage on that. We're gonna move the excavator to the next job, um, which we went over in the last video. So if you missed that, go back to the last one, check it out. Uh, we've already moved the tractor over there. It's uh, ready and staged. It may be dry enough today to go ahead and grab that ditch line, pull it over, and uh, fill in that rut that's been caused by the water not being able to get to the ditch line. Just real quick uh, to cover a question. I wish I'd written the guy's name down, sorry. Um, but he wanted me to touch on how I got started in excavation and grading. And uh, to make a long story short, I started my career out mostly, as far as this goes, as an over the road truck driver. Uh, that's where I acquired my CDLs. Um, I wanted to become local. I, wanted, I didn't want to be you know, traveling all the time. I wanted to have some roots. And uh, so I took a job driving a tractor trailer, hauling heavy equipment for United Rentals. Uh, well, it was RSC equipment rental, and uh, when the economy took a dump, United bought them out. And uh, that's where I got my hands on the controls of skid steers and excavators. Uh, pretty much all kinds of excavation equipment and it was always fun just to control the boom and uh, drive the stuff around and that's kind of where I developed a love for it and when I was ready to start my own thing up by being in that position I already had the ability to haul my own equipment and that's just kind of how it got started uh, started out with a mid 80s uh, gray market Yanmar tractor the ones that come from Korea they bring them over and uh, if I can find the picture I'll post that up uh, and I mean I worked the devil out of that thing I beat it to pieces uh, it's a 50 horsepower uh, I think it's a 3850 or 3830 something like that but yeah, I, mean, I mean it was a good tractor and I'd buy another one in a, in a second, you know, if they were big enough. Started out just fixing driveways, you know, like everybody else, 150 bucks to scrape a driveway, you know, and of course, you know, just learning. I probably screwed up more driveways than I, I even know about, you know, just scraping them down flat, knocking the crown out, thought I knew everything. Uh, yeah, I just like any other young kid thought you know what in the world does a road need a crown for well when your customers call you to go back because it washed with the next rain you learn very quickly that uh, maybe your young self doesn't know everything and maybe these older guys who talk about crowning the road up all the time and those things they say that kind of annoy you they're right so I, I had to kind of eat crow and uh, open my ears and shut my mouth and start, you know, really studying and listening and accepting that just because I thought something seemed right didn't mean that I should believe that I was right, that I needed to be open to learning. And uh, that's, that's how it got started. And Actually, truth be told, uh, which I think it was a smart way to do it. You know, I put an ad out for doing tractor work before I ever even owned a tractor. I thought, I'm gonna put an ad out and just see how many calls I get. Well, it wasn't no time. I think maybe a week before I got my first call. And I had a friend of mine that I knew did tractor work. So I took him with 
with me and I didn't know how to price the stuff and I was like well how much would it cost to do this I think it was like 500 550 bucks so he was gonna need me there to do some rake work you know here I found the job I'm the boss man I'm the one doing the raking but I had like a couple hundred bucks for my labor and uh, paid him and I collected my couple of hundred, I think it was. I really don't even know how much exactly it was I charged. But, and then, wasn't a day or two, got another call. And immediately I saw there is a need for this. So, I went down to the little tractor market and bought me a tractor. I think the payment was like $311 scared me to death I, I thought oh, how in the world am I going to make 300 bucks a month you know consistently you know I didn't know but I took that chance I took that leap and uh, moved forward with it and, and then you get later on where you've got to make thousands a month before you ever turn a profit and you, you should let your company grow itself you know you can take little chances and buy stuff you buy your equipment you know those are your risks you know you buy a piece of equipment that's one reason i encourage people to rent you know until they see that they can get consistent work if it's sporadic in your area that you might need an excavator once or twice a month go ahead and just rent but if you keep one on a job like we do Obviously, I'm not working off a script here. I know I'm bouncing around a little bit. Uh, and hopefully, one of these days, I can get good at this enough to where I can give you guys a good timeline of things. But hopefully, that gives you guys the gist of how this thing got started. And check out this next job, get this excavator moved, and move on to the next one. Let's go. Oops. Not fit. Let's go back here. Let's see how our little road is holding up. And it was super soft the other day when we were working on this. But you can see. Got a little bit of a spot right there. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That's getting solid. I got plenty of material right here. We can just dress that. Definitely got some water running out there. They're gonna be dressing everything else up the way they want. Gonna burn that. We essentially got this thing roughed in. They need to clean their leaves out. But all in all, looks like this thing's holding up good. So let's go grab this excavator and load up and get out of here. So we just got the excavator dropped off at our job and there's really not much of a good place to park here so I'm gonna go have lunch with my sweetheart drop the trailer off and then we may ride back over and do a little bit of digging today um, not sure it'll depend on what time it is if it's worth the drive over here uh, but also to touch on something when I was uh, starting my business and how I got it started. Uh, for somebody who has only worked for somebody else you are not used to, nor are you prepared a lot of the time for the big payments that come along with owning excavation equipment. For example, our truck, $1,400 a month. Excavator is, I think, a little over $1,200 a month. If you get a you know 10k trailer and you finance it anywhere around 200 bucks a month and insurance you know anywhere from two to four thousand dollars a year 
depending on how much coverage you carry. Now, if you guys are adding this up, it adds up very quickly. Uh, but some of the, you can plan on fixed payments. So when you're thinking about starting into this business, what I would do is go out and price equipment as if you're gonna buy it. Because the end game, if you're gonna be in this and you really wanna make the most profit, you're gonna to have to own your equipment. But to get started, there's nothing wrong with renting, and renting is a safe way to get started. So go out as if you're going to buy the equipment. Get your prices from these dealers, and then, you know, right now, interest rates on equipment are around 5%. Uh, just for the sake of this video being on the channel for years, it is 2020. Of course, interest rates change, but get your prices, okay? And then find out from your bank, you know, just tell them what you're looking at and what you're looking to buy, and they can give you an idea of payment and what you can plan on a month, okay? So now, an excavator the size of this one rents anywhere three to four hundred dollars a day, okay? So if you have three days worth of work in a month, Okay, you're up to $1,200, okay? If you're renting, every day you rent it, you know, unless you rent it by the week, we'll get into that another time. Okay, let's just say, for planning purposes, after three days, just three days of work, you have spent what a payment would be. And you still have at least, you know, 20 working days in the month. So that payment starts looking less scary and a lot more appetizing. In the beginning, you know, you're just getting your name out there. There's a chance you may not have three days of work. Then again, you may come out of the gate just wide open. In which case, you know, you're lucky. Um, but now that you know the payment, you know the rent, you can put a plan together. And you can start basing your operating costs and your daily charges. This is where it's tricky and it takes self-discipline to win the bids from other contractors or at least be competitive, you're going to have to bid as if you own that machine. And you're going to lose a lot of bids by renting. I'll just go ahead and tell you, you're going to lose a lot of bids um, unless you have the discipline to bid on a daily rate as if you own that machine. Your profits are going to stink. They're not going to be good. But the end game is that you are winning bids. You may be only making a hundred or two hundred dollar profit a day, but if you're working for fifteen bucks an hour for somebody else, do that math after eight or ten hours. It's still pretty good money. You're still making what you would be making working for somebody else. Now, when things really change for you, is when you make that purchase. You buy that first piece of equipment that you need. And by renting and winning these bids, basing your prices on as if you own the machine, you can make a decision which machine is your first purchase, whether it's a tractor, skid steer, excavator, whatever. You're doing this in a smart way. So you start your advertising, you're renting, you're bidding reasonable, and you're winning bids. Now you've got to keep track of which jobs you're getting the most of. I can tell you right now, I can do just about any job that a skid steer can do that I operate in the mountains. But a skid steer cannot do any job that an excavator can do. They're going to be a blue million people argue with me on this point. But for the way I operate, the types of jobs I like to do, you can't beat an excavator. You know, it takes longer to move dirt, but uh, you can push dirt where you want it to go with an excavator. It may take re angling and working around, but you know, it's not just me we're talking about. We're talking about you out there trying to get this thing started. And uh, 
I believe y'all can do it. You've got to be disciplined and you've got to be hungry for it. You've got to really want it. You've got to want to do the job. If you're just going into it for the money, it's going to be harder than if you enjoy playing in the dirt. That's a fact. That's not to say that there's a lot of people out there who hate dirt, hate being dirty, but they own an excavation company. That's what you call a businessman. He hires everybody else to do his work and make the money, and he's providing jobs. So, you know, good for him or her. And uh, so, to recap, and I'm going to beat this into people, you know, advertise. Start getting the calls. Next, get your costs for equipment as if you're going to purchase it. Get your costs to rent. Then you operate as if you own the equipment. You're going to win bids. You're not going to make a whole ton of profit. Uh, unless, you know, you're just savvy. You know how to schmooze your customers. And I probably shouldn't say that renting, you're not going to make a whole bunch of money. But doing a little job, like, what, what we're talking about is doing a job like I do. Working by myself or working maybe a two-man team, you know, the operator and then the helper. I know a bunch of people who make a really good living and do better than guys who own 10 or 15 employees. It comes down to what you want, what kind of company you want to build. I right now am looking, looking to, in the next month or two, hire a truck driver. You know, help build this thing up and not building any bigger than that. I don't think I'll ever hire more than one helper. You in a whole different world then. So, uh, you guys have a great day. Get out there, rent a piece of equipment, play in the dirt, have fun with it. You may find your passion. We'll see you guys on the next one.